YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the first video. Thank you for the comments and thank you for subscribing. So today we are going to be doing economics and management sciences revision video number two. Stay tuned. Economic and Management Sciences, Grade 7, Revision 2, Needs and Wants. In the second revision for Term 1 content, we deal with needs and wants. And under this topic, we have three subtopics. Firstly, types of needs. Secondly, primary and secondary needs. Thirdly, limited resources. Let's get started. There are so many things that we need in order to stay alive. There are also many things that we want that we don't actually need, but they make our lives better in some way. A need is something you have to have, something that you cannot live without. For example, water, food, shelter. A want is something you would like to have, but it is not necessary for your survival. For example, a cell phone, music, a car. seven we look at three types of needs we have basic needs community needs and country needs all individuals have certain basic needs that have to be satisfied in order for them to survive these basic needs include the need for food water shelter and security a community is a large group of people who live or work together in a particular place when people live or work together they have certain collective needs for examples, these needs could be the need to be protected from criminals, the need for education and training, the need for medical care, the need for entertainment, sports and recreation. Just as a community of people have certain needs, so too a country has needs. For example, there's a need for law and order in a country. There's also a need for protection from attacks or invasion. Needs are put in two categories. The first category is primary needs. Primary needs entails physical needs and security needs. The second category is secondary needs and these entails social needs and self-esteem needs. Primary needs are our most basic survival needs. These are the things that we have to have in order to stay alive and we said they are put in two groups. The first group are physical needs and the second group are security needs. Physical needs are the things that our bodies have to have. For example, food, water, sleep. If these physical needs are not met, our bodies cannot function properly. And some examples of physical needs are oxygen for breathing, food to eat, water to drink, the need to sleep, the need to be protected from the weather, whether it be hot or cold weather. Security needs are the second group of primary needs. Security needs. People need to feel safe and secure. Examples of security needs are the need to feel that others will not hurt us, the need to feel that our belongings will not be taken or broken by others, the need for structure, law and order, the need to know that we live and work in a safe environment. Physical and security needs are known as primary needs because people usually try to satisfy these needs first. Once they are done with primary needs, they then move on to secondary needs. Secondary needs, which are put in two groups. The first group is social needs and the second group is self-esteem needs. Social needs. People like to have friends and be part of a group. 
A person's desire to be part of a network of people is known as a social need. Examples of social needs are the need to have friends, to be part of a team or a group, to feel that we belong somewhere. Our self-esteem is the way that we feel about ourselves. Individuals with a good self-esteem believe that they are capable and worthy people. Individuals with a poor self-esteem do not believe in their abilities and they lack confidence. Our self-esteem needs are needs that must be met for us to feel good about ourselves. And examples are the need to feel recognized and feel that others respect us, achieving success, to be good at something, to feel that what we do is important and valuable. In 1943, Abraham Maslow resolved to explain human motivation. After he studied up on a series of exemplary people, he developed a theory that human beings are motivated by a series of fundamental needs, with each need building upon the foundation of its predecessor. This theory was labelled Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. At the base level is physiological needs. These are the basic needs of the body, such as to eat, sleep and breathe. Once essential needs are no longer motivating us, we can move on to what we require next. This is our need for safety. We strive to build our resources, obtain shelter, food reserves and money. Once we have established our safety, we can move on to our next goal. Here we look for love and belonging. We seek out friendship, a social circle, intimacy and family. Whether in groups or with individuals, it is important for us to both accept and be accepted. Next we have esteem. We strive for respect, both from ourselves and from others. We build ourselves as a person through hobbies or in our profession, in order to be accepted and valued by others. Once all is well underneath, we search for self-actualization. This is the stage of enlightenment, an expression of creativity, a lack of prejudice and a moral comfort. Self-actualization is the reaching of one's full potential. While even Maslow stated that these hierarchies were interrelated rather than sharply separated, Maslow's pyramid nevertheless provides insight into both our own motivations and of those around us. As individuals, we seem to have unlimited needs and wants. However, the resources that we then have are not enough to satisfy these needs or wants. And so we are going to learn how the problem of scarce resources results in people having to make decisions about which needs to satisfy and what goods and services to produce. All the items that are used to produce goods and services are called resources. There are many different kinds of resources, for example, land, labor, transport, water, animals, equipment, machinery, etc. Resources are often limited or scarce because there is a limited quantity of resources that are available and we cannot always satisfy all our needs. When it comes to resources, there are two types of resources. There are renewable resources and non-renewable resources. Non-renewable resources are available in limited quantity, usually because they take a long time to replenish. For example, coal, nuclear, oil, natural gas. Renewable resources, on the other hand, replenish themselves. The five major renewable resources are solar, wind, water, biomass, and geothermal. The economic problem, rather it's the problem of scarcity, which we face, is that we have unlimited needs and wants, but limited resources to satisfy them. Hence, economics is a study of how people decide which needs to satisfy and how to satisfy these needs.
Thank you so much for watching Economics and Management Sciences Revision Video Number Two. Stay tuned. Next time we are going to be busy with Economic and Management Sciences Grade Seven Revision Video Number Three. And remember to subscribe down below.